if you have ever wanted to grow or develop your relationship with God, but you don't even know what it means, you don't know where to start, you don't know the things to do, well, I'm going to help you with this video by sharing with you what I call the five C's to growing your relationship with God. So you may want to pay close attention to this video and watch till the end because I'm also going to share with you two bonus tips that would also help you in this your journey to growing your relationship with God. So let's get right into the video. First of all, what does it mean to have a relationship with God? This is basically like the relationship we have with our friends, our family members, and particularly with our lovers, our significant other. So it is we knowing God and God knowing you. So it's one thing for you to say, oh, I know God, I know about God. But does God know you? So having a relationship with God or growing a relationship with God is basically knowing God, knowing his person, his character, his nature, his traits, his perspectives, his values, his views, his opinions, his life, everything about God, knowing him. And then God knowing you too, knowing your life, your weaknesses, your issues, your failures, your strength, everything about you. It is a relationship. And I needed to know that what we are talking about is much more than being born in a Christian home. I was born in a Christian home, but that doesn't mean I have, or that doesn't necessarily mean, oh, she now has a relationship with God. It doesn't even mean going to a church, being part of a cell unit, or serving in a unit, or serving in one particular ministry or the other. You can even be a pastor, a deacon, a church worker, whatever you want to call it, and you don't have a relationship with God. It is possible to be all the things you think you can be in the Christendom and you don't have a relation, a working relationship with God. It is intimacy. It's not religious something. It is a relationship. To better explain this, let me share an analogy. So you met someone in your high school, a girl, a boy, what, however it is. You met them and you had a crush on them. You know their friends. You know, you happen to know their family. You happen to know who brings him or her to school, people they like, you know the places they like to go to, and you even try to hang around those areas. But does that mean you know them? Because knowing that person, the girl or the guy, would mean knowing their values, knowing their lifestyle, knowing their weaknesses, their strength, their dreams, their visions, knowing some deep things about them so having a crush on someone doesn't necessarily mean oh you know them you would have to come into a close and intimate relationship with them for you to say oh i know this person i know that person and that is the way it is with god you can't just say oh i was born into a christian home my father is a pastor my mother is an evangelist my brother is a deacon my uncle is an elder i have served in the church for eight years for ten years I know God. No, you don't know God by all of that. If, you, if you're going to know God, you would have to come into koinonia, into close, into intimacy with him. That is relationship. Let me share with you these five C's that would help you to grow your relationship with God. Number one is communication. Guys, there is no relationship without communication. Even the one you have with your friends, with your family, with your significant other, there is no thriving relationship without communication. And that is the way it is with God. There is no relationship you can talk about or grow or develop with God without communication. And number one form of communication with God is prayer. You must value prayer. Prayer is basically talking to God, interacting with God, giving your whole attention to God in a two-way conversation, meaning talking to God and then keeping calm and still and listening to his voice. When you're talking to your earthly father, you're talking to your friends, you're talking to your significant other, and you're communicating and conversing with them, you talk, they listen, they talk, you listen. That is just the way prayer is with God. It is basically like conversing with your father, but it is not a religious affair. It is something formed out of relationship. When I say religion, I mean, for example, it's not a must, you must kneel, you must fold your hands, you must bow your heads. You mustn't do all of that just because you want to pray. 
prayer is a relationship. It's a heart-to-heart thing. It's you talking to God, God talking to you. So you can be lying down on your bed. You can be sitting down. You can be drinking a cup of coffee. You can be cooking. You can be doing laundry. You can be walking. You can be standing. Yes, I know we have the particular one we do when we are doing our daily devotions and all of that. But aside from that, prayer is just fellowshipping with God with your words. It is using your words, giving worth to God, sharing your feelings with him, and then listening to his voice, to his instructions. In Luke 1 verse 11, we found Jesus sharing with his disciples something I would call a basic template for prayer, and we all can adopt it. But something that stood out for me in that verse was Jesus saying, when you pray, not if you pray. And this helps us to know that prayer is paramount. Prayer is important. Prayer is a must. It's not something, it's not a religious affair that you should do if you want to or if you don't want to. It's a relationship affair that you should do at all times. In Jeremiah 29 verse 12, the Bible says, then you shall call upon me and you shall go and pray unto me and I will hearken unto your voice. Some translations will say, I will hear you. I will listen to you. I will pay attention to you. God listens to us. And in 1 John 5, 14 and 15, the Bible says, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we desire of him. And that's so comforting. <laughs> and that's so encouraging. God listens to you. So please, if you want to grow your relationship with God this year, value and treasure prayer as a means of communication. Another aspect of communication I would like you to pay attention to is Bible reading and Bible study. This is interacting with God via his word. You can't successfully say, oh, that you know God or you're knowing God without paying attention to his word. Why? Because God and his word are like this. God is his word and his word is him. In John 1 verse 1, the Bible says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. God is his word and his word is him. So you can't separate both of them and say, oh, I know I, I, I am knowing God and you don't know his word. It's impossible. In God's word, you get to find out who he is truly. His work with other people in the Bible, his life, his character, his nature, his value systems, his perspective, his opinions, his values, his standards, and everything that makes him God. Bible reading and Bible study is very important. Bible reading on one hand would just mean reading the Bible, skimming through the pages of the Bible, getting to know what transpired in the Bible, characters and everything, just on the surface level. But Bible study will require you to go deep. Go deep. Study Bible characters, Bible verses, Bible chapters, observe who is speaking, who they are speaking to. Observe how you can practicalize whatever you have read in the Bible in your daily life. Bible study will require you to go deep. There are different Bible plans, different study plans and everything, resources, materials that can help you study the Bible better. There are different Bible translations you can use. It mustn't necessarily be the KJV or the NKJV, that is the New King James Version. It mustn't be all of those thou, therest, and all of the English, the Shakespearean English. You can find CEV, Contemporary English Version. You can find the TPT. You can find the AMP. You can find the message translation, NLT, NIV. There are so many of them. In one of my videos, I'm going to share with you how I studied the Bible using the SOAP method, which is scripture, observation, application, and prayer. If you want me to show you that video because I know it will inspire some of you, let me know in the comment section, okay? Now remember communication is verbal and non-verbal. So the things you're saying and the things you're not saying can also be a form of communication. Another way you can communicate with God is through meditation. The Bible says in Joshua 1 verse 8, this book of the Lord shall not depart out of thy mouth, 
but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, day and night, that thou mayest observe to do all that is written therein. Then thou shalt make thy way prosperous and thou shalt have good success. The emphasis for us is meditate therein day and night. My pastor will always say something, if you can worry, then you can meditate. If you know how to worry very well, then you know how to meditate because worry is simply thinking and brooding and pondering about issues, problems, things that you can solve. And worrying cannot even take away the problems around your life. It will not also solve it. So worrying is basically getting overwhelmed with things around you, issues, problems. But meditation is thinking pondering, brooding over the word of God, what God is saying per time. Now, when you have a problem in your life, instead of worrying about it, you switch into thinking about the word of God concerning that problem. For me, I will simply define meditation as replacing your anxious thoughts with faith thoughts. Now, faith is believing in God's word. And how does faith come? Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So the word of God that you hear the word of God that you know, the word of God that you now meditate upon. You think about it, you brood over it, you ponder on it. So instead of choking yourself up with issues, worries, anxiety, you replace it with the word of God. So meditation is one of the ways you can communicate with God, which is one of the ways you can grow your relationship with God. Before we move into the next C, I need you to remember this point. Communication with God will not always seem so exciting. The way your communication with your friends, your family, your significant other doesn't always seem so pleasing, so sweet, so exciting. It will not always be like that. But it is paramount. It is necessary if you must grow your relationship with God. You must learn to communicate with him. Number two C would be continual communication now there is communication and there is continual communication this is talking to god everywhere and anywhere communication with people in your life your significant other your family your friends it doesn't just happen at a particular time or at a just selected time it doesn't it happens spontaneously at any time you can communicate with them that is the way it is with God. Communication with God should not be streamlined to the times we have our morning devotion, our quiet time, or our scheduled prayer time. Communication with God should happen continually at every given time, in every situation, in every place you find yourself. In First Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18, Bible encourages us to pray without ceasing. In Philippians 4, 6, Bible also encouraged us to pray about everything. In Luke 18, 1, Bible says, men ought always to pray and not to faint. Always to pray and not to faint. And in Ephesians 6, 18, the Bible says, pray in the spirit at all times. All times, not just when you're having your morning devotion, not just when you are praying with your family. Not just when you're praying with your husband, not just when you're praying with your kids, at all times. Meaning, when you find yourself in the bus going to work in the morning, when you're running errands, when you're confused, when you're lacking wisdom, when you need clarity, when you're stranded, at all times. Even when you're looking for something, yes, pray. Ask God to help you find it. It might sound, is that what prayer is all about? Yes, God is a person and he wants you to relate with him like you have a personal relationship with every other person in your life. God wants you to have a personal relationship with him and he even wants something deeper, something deeper than you have with other people. So God wants you to communicate with him about everything, everything. Just talk to him. And number three C is commitment. Now you will agree with me that one of the ingredients that make a quality relationship is commitment commitment from both parties and commitment is being obligated to do something whether for someone or for some people relationship is a two-way thing relating to god and god relating with you 
And then communication is also a two-way thing. Talking to God and then listening to him talk to you. You can't just go all about ranting, praying, sharing, doing all the talking. And then when you're done, in Jesus' name, amen, and you zoom off. You didn't hear what God is saying to you. You're not listening to God's voice throughout the day. You're distracted by one thing or the other. You must be committed to listening to God's voice. You need to know what God is saying per time. What is he saying about your situation? What is he saying about your destiny? What is he saying about your life, about your career, about the person you're trying to marry? What is he saying about the things, the decisions you're taking, the actions, the steps you're taking? What is God saying per time? Listening to God is something that we even struggle to do more than praying or talking to him. We get distracted by so many things. We get distracted by life, the issues of life, social media, people around us, distractions here and there. We get so distracted that we lose out on what God is saying or what God is telling us. If you and I must grow our relationship with God, then we must value not just prayer, but listening to his voice. And this will also mean identifying the unique way that God speaks to you so that you don't get carried away by the voices of your heart, of your mind, of your emotion, of your feelings, of society, of parents, or some other voices. The Bible says, my sheep hears my voice and the voice of a stranger, they will not follow. Now, there are so many ways God speaks to us. The way it is for me will not be the way it is for another person. That will be a different video talking about how we can hear God, how God speaks to us and all of that. But I know that one major way that God speaks to all of his children is through his word. So if you want to hear God, look into his word. Whatever situation it is that you can think of that you're facing in life, the solution, something is written about it in the word of God. Additionally, listening to God's voice comes hand in hand with obeying his instructions. So what you hear will automatically be what you do. So if God says do this, you do it. If God says don't do this, you don't do it. God's word said, if you love me, keep my commandment. If you believe you love God, you want to have a deeper relationship with him. You want to grow your relationship with him. You want to better communicate with him. You want to better know him. You want to better hear him. Then you must also put everything you've heard into practice. Our act of obedience is one way we can grow our relationship with God. We can deepen our work with God. Another area of commitment to God would be trusting God. You must be committed to trusting God. If you have a relationship with someone, especially your significant other, your lover, your husband, your boyfriend, whoever it is, and you don't trust them, you will agree with me that that relationship would be a very difficult, a very weird, a very awkward relationship. I am not in oblivion that some of us find it very hard to trust other people especially if we have gone through some difficult times in the past, if people have been very mean to us, if we have suffered some betrayal from people in the past, we would find it really hard to trust the other people that come our way. But it shouldn't be like that with God. Why? Because God is trustworthy. God can be trusted. God can be relied on. So in growing your relationship with God, you must learn how to trust God wholeheartedly and completely. The Bible says in Proverbs 3, verse 5 to 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Emphasis on all your heart and lean not in your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your part. You must learn to trust God with everything, not just some, not few everything trust god with your relationship trust god with your family your finances your career your destiny your everything trusting god completely and wholeheartedly and being vulnerable with him is letting him know that you know you are aware that he cares about you and that he looks out for you and he wants the best for you and that he will never let you down because he promised in hebrews 13 verse 5 I will never leave you nor forsake you.
Another part of commitment will also be depending on God, depending solely on God. Some of us consider ourselves independent and self-reliant. We can fend for ourselves. We can do stuff by ourselves. We don't need the help of any other person to get our lives going. But if you're going to grow a relationship with God, you must learn how to drop all of those things and depend solely on God. Depend on him for the wisdom you need for the day's job. Depend on him for the wisdom you need to make the right decisions. Depend on him for the understanding you need. Depend on him for clarity when you're confused. Depend solely on God for your provisions, for your finances, for your daily bread. This will also mean focusing less on men and more of God as your source and as your sustainer. So it's important to learn to trust God and depend solely on him if you must grow your relationship with him. Before we get on with the last two C's, if you're hearing anything that will be instrumental to your growth and your relationship with God this year, please leave the video a like. And of course, let me also know in the comment section what you are learning so far. The fourth C would be community. Let me read a scripture in Proverbs 27 verse 17. Iron sharpeneth iron, so a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. Permit me to submit to you today that if you must excel or make progress in your relationship with God and in growing that relationship with God, you will need the community of like-minded people, a community of fellow Christians, people who share the same values with you, and particularly people who understand you, who understand your work with God, and who understand the level that you are in in your work with God and are willing to support you in one way or the other. No man is an island. We need each other. In God's family, we value community, we value fellowship, we value relationships. So you can't just say, oh, I'm all alone, I do my thing, nobody should bother me. No. You won't grow like that. So if it means locating a church family where you are accountable and submitted to, locating a pastor whom you are accountable to, being a part of a cell unit, being a part of a Bible study group, or any other form of community of like-minded people that would support your growth and encourage you, hold you by the hand, help you in excelling with your work with God. Please don't be isolated and don't let the devil isolate you. Don't let the devil tell you you don't need anybody. You are good all by yourself. You're not. You need people around you who will support you and encourage you in growing your work and your relationship with God. The number five C would be contentment. Now, this is where some of us get to miss it. Now, contentment here would mean being at peace and at ease with the process in your work or your relationship with God, being at peace with the unique way God is leading you, God is working with you, not comparing yourself with anyone. The word there is competition, not comparing yourself with anyone. I made a video earlier talking about 20 things I wish every young woman needs to know. And it also applies to young men also. And one of the points I made in that video was avoiding competition. You need to know that our work with God, our relationship with God is not a thing of competition. It is not a thing of who knows God more than the other, who sabi God past. No, it's not a thing of competition. The only competition you should even have is with yourself, beating yourself every day, submitting your flesh to the will of the spirit every single day so that you can be able to do what God wants you to do. You see this flesh? It is in enmity with your spirit. So if you're going to have any competition of any sort, it is submitting this flesh to the will of your spirit so that you can be able to do the things God wants you to do, so that you can be able to have a quality relationship with God. Aside from that, you don't have to compete with anybody. You don't have to feel bad because of the way people pray. They pray so loudly, so you feel bad because you pray so calmly. They pace around when they pray, so you feel bad because you stand still when you pray. You don't need all of that. 
And this awkward feeling comes most of the time when we get to see people's achievements on social media, how they are working with God, how they are living their life, how their prayer life is, how their study life is. We begin to feel bad with the little that we are doing. Little drops of water, they say, make a mighty ocean. So please, calm down. Parabale, calm down. Be at peace with the process and enjoy the process. Earlier on in the video, I mentioned about two bonus tips that I'll be sharing with you that will also help you in growing your relationship with God. And number one is relationship with God is not reserved for a selected few. You heard me right. It is not reserved for your pastors, elders in the church, your mothers in faith, your deacons, deaconesses, and the big people you think of, it is not. Relationship with God is for everyone. God wants to build and grow and nurture a relationship with you at whatever level that you are in, okay? So I need you to do away with that lie and embrace this truth that will help you in growing your relationship with God. It is not for some sort of people it is for everyone. Everyone can enjoy a relationship with God. Everyone can access God. Everyone can talk to God. Everyone can read the Bible. Everyone can fellowship with God. Relationship with God is for everyone. Number two bonus point, our relationship with God is not a destination. It's a journey. It's a process. And because it is a process, it will come with its highs and its lows. So some days you feel like it, some days you don't feel like it. But I want to encourage you to keep at it. Why? Because the more steps you take in drawing closer to God, the deeper he reveals himself to you. A personal relationship with God is something that you must treasure above every other thing else and i just hope that the points that were laid out in this video would help you in one way or the other to grow your relationship with god this year and beyond i am rooting for you and i am praying for you i would leave the link to the video i mentioned earlier in the description box and of course the links to other videos that will be beneficial to you Remember to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and share with me in the comment section where you are in your relationship with God, what's working and what's not working. Remember also to click the subscribe button to be a part of the family. Until next video, bye. I love you.